We have a special speaker today. And next week, we have another speaker coming to talk about her, her desire to do missions in Thailand. And so, two special speakers back to back. But today, I'm going to ask my brother, Alfredo, to uh, give him a little rest from singing, to take over and uh, bring us the word of God. Amen. Um, God bless you guys. How are you guys doing? Good. You guys doing? And all the fathers, how are you guys doing today? You guys are... Uh, John's back. How you doing, John? You feeling good? Yeah? Uh, praise God. I'm happy you're back. Um, before we start, I want to see all the dads, all the grandfathers. You guys can stand up. You know, all the dads and grandfathers. You're a dad? Well, stepdad. Hey, stepdad. Hey, you still found. You're a father. You're supporting. Amen. So I want to, think, you know, I want to, you know, I want to say happy fathers to all you guys. Um, hopefully your kids, hopefully your grandkids, hopefully your wife and everybody just treat you um, really good. And um, I want to pray for you guys right now, if that's okay with you guys. All right? I want you guys to close your eyes by your hands real quick. Lord, we come before you. We just thank you, Father, Lord, for everything you've done, Lord. Father, Lord, we just thank you for each father, each grandfather that's here, Lord, that you, you bless them in the way, Lord Jesus, that to have uh, what they need, Lord Jesus. I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, give them the strength to keep going, to keep going, Lord, and to keep sharing the gospel to their families, to the kids, to the grandkids. Do not hesitate, Lord Jesus. Keep on praying for them. Give them, but let them be the man, Lord Jesus, that you want them to be, Lord. Let them be the father, the grandfather that you want them to be, Lord Jesus. I ask you right now, bless their life, Lord Jesus. Bless their walk. Bless their words they speak, Lord. Let them speak life, Lord. Don't let them speak death, Lord. Don't let them speak lifting up words, Lord Jesus. Not the words who bring down kids or bring down the family, Lord. Let them, Lord Jesus, be the man that you want them to be, Lord, for your glory, for your kingdom. So we pray for each one of them right now, Father, Lord. Give them the strength, Lord Jesus. Give them the ability, Lord Jesus, to just keep seeking you, Lord. In any situation that I may face you right now, Father, Lord. Right now, Lord Jesus, like the song has said, you are the God of the valley, God of mountains for the good and the bad, Lord Jesus. But you're always going to make the way, Lord, to take us out, Lord Jesus, when we're stuck. I ask you right now for each, Father, for each of them, Lord Jesus, that they be blessed, Lord, and they be just blessed today. In your name we pray. Amen. So today... My sermon is called The Love of, the, love of, of a Father. All right? So right now, the love of the father that I have two kids. I have two girls. And sometimes they get mad at me. Um, you know, I'm a young father. And some of you guys have grandkids. How many of you guys have grandkids? Uh, you guys have grandkids. You guys grew, you know, your kids are grown and everything. My kids are 11 and 3 years old. All right? Um, so the love of the father, sometimes I, I, I fail... Myself, I fail as a father sometimes. I, I, I slip up, all right? How many you guys, how many dads out there have messed up in certain ways to say something that may hurt the child, uh, did something that they shouldn't have done, all right? Um, I'd be the first to raise my hand. I've done that, all right? Um, I've done that many times, you know? I am still learning, I'm still praying, I'm still getting asking God to help me through this. You know, again, I have an 11 year old, she thinks she's 17. You know, I have a three year old that she's wild, she's crazy, she runs around, destroys everything. You know, but, you know, I love my kids and God bless me with those kids. So I'm raising these kids up in, in, in Christ. Um, like the Word of God says, you raise, you raise your children in, through, in Christ and to be prosper. Amen. And um, I ask you right now for fathers, you know, I want advices from you guys. I want to hear from you guys. What's the toughest thing you have to do as a father? The toughest thing you have done? Discipline. Discipline. That is the toughest thing. I, I, I have to discipline my child. My wife is a little softer. My wife can take more than I can. Um, and my wife, my little girl, you know, talks back to me. And I, I want to discipline her right away. You know, stuff. My wife, my wife can take that over and over. But me, I, I can't do that. All right. Uh, what else is the hardest thing for a father to do? Anything else? Discipline is a big one. All right. Um, you know, 
for me, for myself, you know, the big one was discipline, the big one is not, you know, not being there sometimes as I should be there. Uh, um, the love of Father, you should be there all the time. You should support your child in the ways they, they want to do. Like my father. My father tells me all the time that he wants my brother to be a doctor. So my brother went to college, he went to school for it, and he, he forget about it, he says too much. All right? My father wanted to be, you know, he wants us to be things that, you know, it be good for us in the, long, in the long run, but it's not what God wants us to do. Amen. Amen? And sometimes for a father, we want a child to, to, to do things what we want them to do. But we have to understand that they have the year that God is speaking to them. God is telling them, I want you to go this way. And sometimes we can't stop that. Much as we want to stop that, we can't. You know, because they're going to go the way they want to go. All right? When I was younger, I wasn't a perfect man. I wasn't a perfect child. I wasn't a perfect person. All right? High school, teen years, throughout through high school, I messed up in my, my life. You know, the same thing with my older brother. You know, he wasn't a perfect person when he was a teenager. Trust me, I know. All right? He was a bully, kind of. All right? you know, but he wasn't a perfect person. All right? but, but my parents, my dad always tells me, keep your sight on Christ. Love Christ. Follow Jesus. Be with Jesus. Do what Jesus wants you to do. Um, sometimes for a father, you know, it's, it's hard to see our children hurt. You know, I, I saw a music video one time. A father was working on the truck, but in the back flashes, he had a little girl, his little daughter was with him everywhere she went. When he was fixing the truck, she was there fixing the truck with him. When he was lying fireworks, she was there lying fireworks, having fun and laughing. But when she got a little bit older, 16 and 17, that, that relationship that they had was spreading apart. At the, end, in the middle of this video, the daughter went out and, and, and lived a wild life in the world. And uh, the father was hurt. Hurt hard, you know. He was just missing, loving his child, his daughter, but she just took off. But at the end of the song, when the father was buying fireworks, his daughter ran. And do you know what the father did? The father did not just look at her and say, you know what, you learn your lesson, I don't want to see you. No, he ran to her and gave her a hug and embraced her. And that was a beautiful, beautiful music video I saw. Because we see that, okay, you know, she messed up. She went through the, she went through the, wrong, the wrong path. But as a father, your love is always going to be there. You may hate what they're doing, you may hate what they see they go going to do, but you keep your faith in Christ, you keep on praying for your children, your grandchildren, and God will guide them back to his path. It's, all, it's really, you know, it's, for a father, it's up to you guys to be the leader. Because I'm not telling you the truth. Women, moms and women are a strong prayer. They pray a lot more than man does. In the back in the days, I bet you, your mom was on her knees praying for you than your father was. It's always been like that. But we have to change it as for our father. We have to change it. We have to start being on our knees with our wives for praying to, with our, for our children. Amen. Even for our grandchildren. You know, we have to do that because we have to break the cycle of just the mother will pray and the father will do the, do the just working, making money, bringing the money in. You know, do the the hard discipline. We have to be a father that to guide our family together and, and as a way that God wants us to be. Because that's what God said in the Bible. We are the head of the household. You know what I mean? Yes, we are the head of the household that God said. We have to put our people, you have to put our children, our wife. we have to guide them and we have to pray for them. It's up to us as a father and as a grandfather. And this is the, the thing I want to talk about right now is how many of you guys know the song, the, 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 uh, the story about the prodigal son? You guys heard that prodigal son? I'm, I'm not going to read the whole thing. We'll read a couple of verses. Um, five, Luke chapter 15, 17, 23. If you guys don't have a Bible, it's going to be up here. Is that the one that liked corn? Which one? Is that the one that liked corn? No, this one. So this is the one that um, he asked his father for all the inheritance. He went out and they lived a wild life. And, um, and uh, we're going to read right now about it. So what happened was, 
And if, we, if you read Luke chapter 15, if you read that, it talks about a young man and a, a, a man with two boys. And he said, one young, the young man wants the inheritance that the father is going to leave the children. He said, I want the inheritance. Yeah, give it to me. And that's it. You know, so he packed all his stuff, got the inheritance, took off, and lived a wild life. He lived a party life. He did things that he shouldn't have done. He lived, he met people that act like their friends and, and spent all his money. All the inheritance that dad gave him, he spent it on. And we're going to go to this point, chapter 17. It says, when he came to his sense, and so that part there, before this part, if you read the next the, uh, 16, it talks about him, feeding, you know, no money, no nothing, and he got a job as feeding the pigs. And he says, and the Bible says that when he saw feeding the pigs, he was so hungry, he saw the food inside the pig trough. What did he do? He's so hungry, he saw that he wanted, he started eating it. And this was 17, it says right here, that he, when he came to his sense, he said, how many, how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and I am here starving to death? I will sit out and go back to my father and said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your servants and your hired servants. Let's keep going. It says, so he came, he got, he got up and went to his father. But while he's still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arm around him, and kissed him. The son said to your father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, quiet, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger, the sandals on his feet, bring the fattest calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. So again, this is a father's love right there. This is a, this is a story, a parable that Jesus was telling, a parable where Jesus was talking. He said that his love, God, Jesus Christ's love is like this. You may go and you may find your kids or even yourself doing things that you shouldn't have done, going out there and leaving the Lord, turning it back on you, turning it back on Christ and doing the worldly things. But when you come back, you think you're not worthy. But in the story, God's saying that, that when the father saw his son from far away, he didn't stand there and look at his son and shook his head. He did not stand there and look at his son and just turn his back away and walk back in the house. He said that he saw his son and he got compassionate. He felt, he felt love. He felt things that he never, you know, he felt before, more than before. And the thing I love, it says that he ran to his son. He didn't say he walked. He didn't say he skipped. He didn't say that he, he you know, sat down and waited for his son to come to him. No, he said that the man that had the father ran to his son and embraced him. How many of you guys have kids right now? I'm not assuming Christ. You know, don't raise your hand. I'm sorry. Don't raise your hand. Just in your mind. You guys may have kids right now, not serving Christ. You guys may have grandkids and not serving Christ. You know, they may live in a worldly thing, worldly life. Um, you know, we we're gonna face that. You know, I'm young still. My kids are still young. But, but a father, as I see uh, my grand uncles and, and, and their kids, and I see, you know, different brothers and sisters from different churches and their families, I see what happens to the sons and, and, and the daughters when they leave Christ and left the Lord. Some fathers will just turn their back on the kids and say, okay, you know what, if you want to live on your own, live on your own. Don't come crying to me, no. Some fathers who lock the door and shut the door and do not even think about the son and the kid, the children, the daughter, or grandkids again. I have an uncle that he has a daughter, and she's 16, 17, like 17, 18 years old, somewhere around there, and she's she's rebellious. You know, she she's she has a boyfriend that is no good, and, but she, you know, she don't listen to the to the father because her boyfriend says something different. But 
The father and Mongo did not turn his back on her, still loves her, still cares for her, still, you know, keep her in the house and everything. That's the love of a father. Sometimes, you know, I, I've seen things where people, where fathers themselves, uh, abandon the kids. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of kids nowadays, I hear maybe I hear in the streets, I hear in the neighborhood, don't have a father figure. Some of them have just a mother. And that's what for us as a church, you know, we go out there and witness and go out there and bring these kids here. We become the father figure for them. Not as uh, you discipline them, not as you spank them and everything, but as you lead them the way of Christ. You lead them the way of God wants you to lead them. Because they don't have father figures maybe. You know, don't have, maybe they do have father figures. They have dads and stuff, but the dads are not similar to Christ. I know I got two friends. One friend, his dad's in Mexico, and he, he left him when he was young. And uh, now his dad is sick, gave him a call, and his dad, you know, and the son forgave him. The son go to Mexico and, and see his dad and he just, you know, forgave him and everything. I have another buddy that, he, he, his dad, same thing, got into drugs and left. You know, but he still loved his dad. But as a father, we, we should recognize our forces. We should not like, you know, put it on our kids or our grandkids. This father did not turn around, did not curse on him, did not Tell them that you did this and this and this and this wrong. Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? You should listen to me. I know more than you. No, he did not say that. What he did is he embraced them. He said, quick, bring in the best robe. Put the ring on the finger. Bring the biggest calf. Let's kill it. Let's have a feast because my son is back. See, when Jesus Christ comes, when Jesus Christ sees that, Jesus looking, he said, that's, yes, look at my son left me. You know, why is he turning back on me? But I'm going to be here waiting for you. And when he comes back, I'm not going to discipline him. I'm not going to tell him off. I'm not going to tell him you did this and this wrong. I'm going to embrace him. I'm going to love him like I never loved him before. And this is what the father did. If you keep reading this, it's an awesome parable that God was talking. If you keep reading, it talks about the other son and, and the conflict they have with the brothers and everything. You know, and I encourage you guys, keep on reading this. It's an awesome, awesome book. I want you guys to open your Bible to John chapter 3, verse 1. So the Father's love, that's what we are going to focus on. It's God's love, a Father, Heavenly Father. All right? and, and, and this is an example should, as a Father should follow. All right? We should follow what, what God shows love. Amen? It says right here, if you guys have it, you guys don't have it, read it up here. It says, Behold, what manner of love that the Father hath bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it does not know Him. So God's love is bestowed, it's upon us. Now we are called what? Children of God. You guys are children of God. That's an that's a awesome a privilege, an awesome tire to have. Amen? You know, we are children of God. We have a greatest father in ever in anybody's, any place. We have the best father. His name is Jesus Christ. He showed us what to do as a father. He showed us what to do as a parent. We should discipline our child, yes, but discipline our child in love. Jesus Christ walked this earth. He did discipline the disciples, but he showed love when he disciplined. He didn't show, you know, anger. He showed, you know, he didn't show like he's, he's, you know, like I don't want to see you no more, but he showed love through his discipline. A lot of things, a lot of father thinks discipline is giving a belt and switch and go pick a stick. Go pick a stick out of the tree. How many of you guys did that to your kids? Uh, how many of you guys, how many of your fathers did to you? Say, so go outside, pick a switch, and come back, and I'm going to use it on you. All right? See, no, no, no it's not. Hey, first John. First John. Oh, first John, thank you. Yes. All right? 3 1. 
So we need to know that God bestowed us his love and we should call ourselves children of God. Amen? We should call ourselves children of God. In Romans 8, 38 and through 39. You guys got that? Now it's going to be up here. It says, For I'm convinced that neither, neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nor neither the present, nor the future, nor the, any power, neither height, death, neither anything else in all creations will be able to separate us from the love that God is in Christ Jesus our, God, our Lord. Amen. So God's love, nobody can separate us from that. Not even the devil himself can separate us from that. The only thing we can separate the love is that God love from us. No, but we can separate us from God. We can separate our love for God, but God will never separate his love for us. That's what it says here. It's, it didn't say that, you know, God will, you know, have partial love if you follow, just follow him. God said he loves you fully. Even, even, the, even the demons around there will, will never separate the love of Christ. And this is an example of the Father we should have to our kids, to our grandkids. We shouldn't have our love. Neither that, even the bad things they do, we should show them love. Even the things that they, that you are disagreeing with, you should show them love. Amen. You should not condemn. You should not put down your kid. Mm. I make mistakes like that. You know, I'm young. I make mistakes like that. I'm not gonna say here I'm not. I'm a perfect dad. I'm not like number one dad. <laughs> I'm not. All right. My father makes mistakes. I, I would say that my father does make mistakes. You know, he still sometimes he still does. You know, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's an older German, he still does. You know, um, I, I read something before, a, a, a little quote they're using. Um, a father's love for the, for the kids, it says that when a child is three years old, or four, you know, the child was eight years old, he thinks, the child thinks in his mind, my dad knows everything. And when he's eight, nine years old, he said, my dad, man, he's a genius, he's strong, he's a superhero. When he turns 16 and 17, my, dad, my dad's an old man. How would he know? When he turns you know, 18, 19, he says, man, this old man doesn't know nothing. Just sit down and relax. But when he's turning 30, 40, you know what? I should go ask my dad you know, what he thinks about it. When he turns 50, 60, he says, oh, man, let's, let's see what dad says about this. When he turns 70, 80, he says, I wish I could talk to my dad again. In the, in the stages, that's what's going to happen in life. You know, you're gonna, you, you young, I done that. When you're young, you're gonna tell you, you know, your old man, like, you're an old man, you don't know nothing. This is a new time, this is a time that you don't understand. But as a father, and as I tell you, you guys know more than any young man's here. But don't get, don't get discouraged when your children says that. Just keep on praying for them. Your grandkids, you keep on praying for them because down the line they will be wiser and they will say, you know what? My grandfather or my father, you know what? He was a wise man. I had a grandpa, he was a wise man. He didn't know how to read. He didn't know how to write. He didn't know how to write his name. My grandpa, when he didn't go to school, he was, how old was he? My grandpa when he went to school? At the third grade. Only to third grade. And after third grade, he went straight to work. You know, he never learned, he never had the education, but you know what he could do? He could build, make a chimney, had a car out of bricks, beautiful chimney. He could make anything, he could plaster a wall, he could build a house, he could do everything. But he didn't have the education, he didn't have the paper that said, look, it, I went to college, I have a master's degree. But he was a wise man. Because you know why? He learned from his life experience. You know, and the same thing with my father. My father, you know, he went to the Navy, he went to this, he did this, he went to, you know, everything. But, you know, he's a wise man too because he, he uses his mind, you know, and he's building houses, he's plastering houses and, and things that a lot of kids don't know. I'm learning from that. That's why I thank God for my father because he taught me a lot. He, t he teaches me a lot of doing things, building things, working with my hands. I'm not, I'm not telling you, I'm not a person that goes to school. I'm not a smart reading. I can't sit down in a book and read a big old thick book. 
But I can build stuff with my hands, no problem. Yeah? Yeah, and Jesus is the same way. Jesus built stuff with his hands. I'm not saying I'm Jesus. No, don't get me. No, don't, don't, don't say that. But Jesus built stuff with his hands. See, if my father, he built stuff with his hands. He taught me that ways. I'm the only child that is doing the work. My brother went to college. My sister went to college. My little brother went to college. And my other brother went to Spain. He went to he's in Spain right now as a missionary. You know, I'm the only one that was working my hands in construction. But I thank God for that every time. I thank God that, that God had, I still have my father, first of all. Uh-huh. You know, he's 73, 72 years old. He's still, he's still out there working, you know, and um, working strong. And I still have my father, you know. They got a lot of young people that, that the father passed away young. They got a lot of young, young kids, six, seven years old, eight years old, that the father, you know, commits suicide or the father just leaves. All right? And that's why for us, we have kids. But now for us, we have to go out there and reach for these young kids out here. Amen? We have to go out there and preach to them. Bring them in the church. Raise them up the way that God wants them to raise. It's, it's not just sitting in these benches. We'll give you, sitting in these chairs. We'll give you the glory. We we'll sit in these chairs. We'll say, okay, people will come if I sit down. No, you have to step up and go out. You have to step up and do it. See, Jesus Christ did not just sit in his house waiting for his ministry to come and sit down in his house. Okay, my ministry come. I sit down. People will come to me. And I bet you people will come to him. But he decided to keep walking into different places, different pieces, and, and, and share the gospel, share what he is. And, and he reached 5,000, 10,000. He reached a million, thousands and thousands of people. This is an example that we should follow. This is an example that should, we, should, we should grasp on and hold on to. We should like say, you know what, I'm going to wave my kids, my daughter, my son, my grandson. You know, I'm going to get them in the church, bring them here to church. I'm going to just raise them up the way to cry, the way to the Lord. I'm going to keep on praying for them. It doesn't matter how old your kids is. You, you may be, your kid may be 40, 50 years old. It doesn't matter. You still pray for your kids. It doesn't matter what age. You pray until the new race is finished. Amen. Until the last day. Until God cries, okay, you done, come home. Like I said, my grandpa never had education. But he loved Christ. He loved Jesus Christ. He's there. You know, my grandpa, in, 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 we used to go to Gilroy Church. His job was ringing the bell. We used to have a bell. That he's grabbed off a rod and he just rings it. He goes out there every Sunday. He's, that's his job. He rang the bell. Ding, ding. And, and, you know, everybody hears that. And that's, you know, everybody loves it. You know? He took pride of it. He didn't like say, oh, man, again. No, he took pride of it. He did it. And that's an example that I saw. It's like, okay, you know what? Something so small, he made it. You know, he knew he was doing it for the Lord. He wasn't doing it for the people. He wasn't doing it for no one else. He was doing it for Jesus Christ. And that's an example that I had. The same thing, my father. My father, you know, he built things at the church, but he didn't, he didn't do for the people. He did it for the Lord. An example, I'm doing for my kids. I'm doing. I'm showing that. Look, at, it's it's not. You're not pleasing the people here in the church. You're not doing it for this brother and this sister. You're doing it for Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the only job you're doing. It is not just to please your brothers and sisters. It's to please Jesus. Amen. It's not, that's, that's, that's all you, you need to do, pleasing God. Follow what God wants you to do. You know, do what God, do what God said. Imitate God. The Bible says, imitate Jesus. And, uh, imitate what Jesus done. I'm not saying you're going to walk on water. I'm not saying you're going to heal the sick. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not saying that. You could pray for someone and they could be, they could be healed through, through Christ. You know, there's a story about a young, uh, I, I, I'm almost finished. So this is a story that I told a long time ago about a, a father and a son. I don't know if you ever heard this story. This is on my end with this. So the father and son, the father was working in a railroad. His job is to, when the train comes, to pull the lever for the train to go this way. So one day he brought his son to work. And his son was like a young kid. He was like eight, ten years old. And his son was playing around. 
And if the father says, son, look at, don't go on the train tracks because if you go on the train tracks, then, then, then you know, you may get stuck. And then you got trains, it's gonna be dangerous. And the son's like, okay, yeah, dad, no problem. So the son kept dad working, dad saw the train, look at the son, son, look at the train, found me, I put the lever, look at now the train, two trains will miss each other. They won't ram into each other. So what happens next is, the dad will just keep working, got caught on his word, and his son was playing, and then you look down, in the window, he saw his son playing on train tracks. And then he saw two trains coming. So he had a choice. It's to uh, uh, run out and save his son or to save those thousands and thousands of people that were on the train. That's a choice that he, he had to do in, in that moment. I don't know if any, any time in your life you see in situations in your life, he slowed down like this. When you see something like something like something bad's gonna happen, everything slow down a little bit. And he's like, you just thinking, okay, what should I do? The father, same thing what happened to him. He's everything slow down for him. He didn't know what to do. He said, God, give me the strength. God, please, Lord, please, Lord. I, I want to save my son, but if I don't do that, the thousands of people will die. What should I do? Lord, please, please, Lord. And he was praying, praying, and the train's getting closer and closer. He was yelling for his son, but his son didn't hear. His son was playing out there. And what happened is his father pulled the lever and the train ran over his son. He had a choice to save his son of killing thousands and thousands of people. But he sacrificed his son to save those thousands of people. That's the same way that Jesus Christ, that God did to his son. He could have took God, he took, he could have took Jesus Christ out of all the situations that he was in. He could have took him out like that. But, but the love that God has for us and for the people, he sacrificed his only son on the cross. See, the, the, the father saw the son, and the people on the train did not know about it. They did not even look at blame, turn around. The trains keep on going, but the father up there was crying in tears and in pain then, you know, because he lost his son. And, and that's how we should show our love. I'm not saying go out there and sacrifice a kid. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is show the love that 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 God had. God had a, an awesome example for us to do, and, and He said in His Word that we should call it if we are children of God. We should show love to people out there, to love your kids, even love your wife. It's not just, uh, you know, your wife is your partner. You know, you don't yell at her, you don't do things to her, you don't do this and that. You guys been, how many you guys been, how long you guys been, how long have you guys been married? Long time. Long time. Huh? <laughs> 50 years. 50 years. What? Amen. Amen. Praise God. 50 years. I know one pastor from Prunedale, he been married for 63, 63 years, yeah, and they still love each other like no tomorrow, all right? But we should be together in, as a family, as a husband and wife, and get together and, and be united and pray for our children. Doesn't matter how old they are. They could be 20, 50, 60 years old, it doesn't matter. We pray for them. Because if you want your children to come back to Christ, you want your grandchildren to seek God, it's up to you to get on your knees and let God take control. Amen. Don't, don't try to force them to do it. That won't work. They're going to turn them back on Christ. Let God take control. You tell them a couple of times, hey, come to church. No, okay. Come to church. No, okay. Pray for them. And you see that. Like, next time you ask, hey, you want guys want to come to church? No, why? Well, yeah, just go to church. <laughs> you what? Guarantee it. If you stop praying right now, that's what's going to happen. So I want to see all the fathers stand up real quick one more time. I want you guys to come up, up, up in the front. All the grandparents, stepfathers, all right? Come in the front. All the grandfathers too. All right. and we're going to have Max Stone and Pastor Stone and uh, Lorena and uh, See if you guys can start. We're going to pray for you, Father. We're going to pray for you, right? We're going to put your hand. We're going to put our hands upon you guys. We're going to pray for you guys. Um, don't be afraid. Come a little closer. I don't know about you. Yeah. All right? 
Uh, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray for just guidance, all right? Because again, most of you guys have grandkids, and, uh, and we wanna raise you. Want you want to see your grandkids in church, praising God? You want to see your children in church, praising God? But sometimes, if we grab our, if you grab your grandkids into church, slowly by slowly, the parents will come. I've seen that happen. Kids come to church, the parents start coming to church. Amen. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And I'm going to uh, come and pray. We're going to pray for you guys right now. Lord, we come before you. We just thank you, Father. Lord. We just thank you for everything you've done, Lord Jesus. We pray right now for, for, for this for the man right here, Lord. We pray for his, his heart. We pray for the words that he's going to speak. We pray for the step that he's going to take. The Lord Jesus, that he will show the love that you have for us, Lord. That you show, that you tell a parable about the young man that lost everything, that spent everything that the father gave. He's going to run, Lord Jesus, and, and embrace his children, his daughters, his grandkids. And show them love and tell them that he loves them. Tell them that Jesus loves them, Lord, and tell them that Jesus is waiting for them. I ask you right now, give them the words, the wise words to speak, Lord. Right now, we pray right now, Lord Jesus, for John, Lord Jesus. Right now, we pray for healing, Lord, but also, Lord, we pray for the words, Lord Jesus. That he could speak to his grandkids, his daughter, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, wherever she's at, if she's close by, Lord, let him be the example. Let him embrace her. Let him just show love to her, Lord Jesus. I ask you right now, Lord Jesus, guide the steps that he takes and the words that he speaks. Lord, now, Jesus, that it will be anointed, Lord Jesus, by your love, by your heart, Lord Jesus. I ask you right now. We pray right now, Lord Jesus, that we just give us... This is the, the, young, the, the brother right here, Lord Jesus, the ability, Lord Jesus, to just seek you, Lord, and to love you, Lord Jesus. So I ask you right now, Father, Lord Jesus, that you just be with him, Lord. For, for he may be a stepdad, but Lord Jesus, he's still a father, Lord. Let him be the example of your love. Let him be the example of what God can do, Lord Jesus, what he can change in a man. I ask you right now, Father, Lord, for any grandkids that he has or anybody, Lord Jesus, that is close to him, Lord, that he be the light in the darkness, Lord Jesus. In his family, he would be the man of God, Lord Jesus. And Lord, we pray for that right now, Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done, Father, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, and we just love you, Lord Jesus, and we just give you the honor and the praise. In your name we say, Amen. Amen.